Do you really need one of Apple's bigger iPhones? These 14 pros and cons should help you decide. Apple just made it a lot harder to pick an iPhone. Apple just made it a lot harder to pick an iPhone. The company recently introduced not one, but two new iPhones, the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, both of which you can order on September 12th, and pick up when they go on sale September 19th. But with the iPhone 5C and 5s still formally in the running and price reduced, that means you now have four iPhones to choose from. What's more, the spectrum of features keeps growing, making that choice about as involved as it's ever been. I'm just going to focus on the new iPhones, though if you want to scan our iPhone 5's rundown from last September, you can find that here. On your mark, get set. Pros. Reasons to buy the return of curves, assuming you like curves, remember the original iPhone way back when? That thing, you probably forgot, had a half curved edge, from the back, before Apple shifted to a frame nearer hard right angles. The iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus are like that original frame, but more holistically executed, what Apple calls a continuous, seamless design, meaning the surface is texturally unbroken, and the cover glass, iron strengthened, referring to a process in which one type of iron is exchanged for another to make the glass more durable, meets the anodized aluminum backing without tactile differentiation. Apple adds that these are its thinnest iPhones yet with thicknesses of 0.27 inches, the iPhone 6, and 0.28 inches, the iPhone 6 Plus. That's hair splitting, the iPhone 5's is only fractionally thicker at 0.30 inches, and good luck discerning hundredths of an inch. But I suppose it gives Apple's marketing team another bragging point.